In this training session, I'll be walking Cindy through the inspection process on items that are packaged in bulk. Here we are at photo station number two with pack items packaged in bulk. Cindy is going to take photographs of these items to document the original condition as they were received. These photographs are taken to provide the necessary audit trail from the beginning to the end of the inspection process. We're at the real counter station where we use a scale to determine the count of items received in bulk packaging. Uh, we do so to verify that the quantities on the labels are the actual quantities that we actually receive. To do so, we turn the scale on and then we take a container and <coughs> excuse me, put it on the top of the scale and then we tear or zero the scale. We then get a subset or sample of the parts that or units that we're going to count. In this case, we're going to put five units of a three lead transistor outline package. And then we're going to hit sample to get our sample set. And now that we have our sample set, after we put them in and hit sample, we're going to then put the entire quantities into the container so we can get the actual count of the units received. And now that we have placed every single unit in the container, we can verify the count for the, all the items received in this bulk package. Now we're going to verify all the part marking information against the manufacturer's data sheet. In a normal inspection, we will use a larger subset of units, but in this case, for this instructional video, we will be using just one unit. First, we're going to verify the part number and date code, and to make sure the correct manufacturer is received. We will also verify the pin count against the manufacturer's data sheet. We will then inspect the leads and after doing so, we'll begin taking our photos. First, we'll take photographs of the top and of the bottom. Then we'll get our caliper and take caliper measurements and photos of the measurements. We'll first measure the length of the part. After verifying the length of the part, We'll then take a measurement of the width of the part. After that, we will then take a measurement and a photograph of the height of the part. These dimensions, again, will also be verified against the manufacturer's data sheet. Another part of the inspection process is surface and marking permanency tests. To do the marking permanency test, we'll take a swab or Q-tip and dip it in a 3-in-1 solution of mineral spirits and alcohol, and then we will rub against the part marking to see if any of the markings are removed. To perform a surface test, we use acetone, and again, we'll use a swab or Q-tip, and rub on the body of the part 
away from the markings. This test is to verify if there is any black topping or any other substance that may be on the body of the part. After completing those steps, we'll then go to the microscope for a more detailed inspection. Here we are at microscope station number one, where Cindy will perform her microscopy and also take detailed photos of the units under the microscope. First, we'll place the unit on the stage of the scope and get a closer look on the 90X magnification of the part markings. We will then uh, take a look at the body of the part where the surface test was performed and get a close-up to see if there were any scratch marks revealed. We would then take the unit and look at the leads and in doing so we will be verifying the that there are no drag marks, that there are no demarcation lines, and also the overall shape of the leads. We look at the front side of the leads as well as the back side of the leads. After verifying our lead conditions and taking all our photos, we would then take a photo of the coplanarity of the leads on the coplanarity mirror. To take coplanarity photos, we would use the tray shot camera, also located here at microscope station number one. Cindy's going to place a unit on the coplanarity mirror. She's going to center the unit and get it to the edge of the stage and the mirror and then take a photograph. With the coplanarity mirror, the image is reflected showing that the leads are either straight or touching on the stage or the uh, flat plane that the unit is sitting on. After taking the photo, you can view your image to make sure that the unit is considered coplanar or not. The step is repeated on both sides of the unit, in this case a dip, or all sides on a QFP or a PLCC. To complete our inspection process, we're here at Cindy's inspection station where we'll upload our photographs, input data such as our caliper measurements, and that will complete the visual inspection.